Hey guys, Keith from the Ash and Fly Shop here. Uh, kind of late summertime, late summer, thinking about the fall uh, coming up, the, you know, the, the Klamath, the Rogue. I know that most of you who've talked to me know that I love to fish skaters, um, but that's going to kind of end here in a minute. And this fly in particular, I tie because I'm extremely lazy. I hate changing tips. So what we're doing here is I have a nice traditional style fly and I'm kind of hiding a bunch of wire in there. But uh, nice fall colors, stands out well, enough darkness it's gonna work in the evenings too. Um, been fishing it for quite a while now, so, or something really close to it anyways. Um, here we go, I'll show you how to do it. All right, so here we are, uh, Alec Jackson. I like the steelhead irons for this, it's a little heavier. Five, sevens, you know, kind of your pick. If it is, if you're gonna be fishing the Klamath or the Rogue and you need a little smaller fly, the, the seven's really good. Um, we're gonna make it kind of heavy anyways because we're putting a little bit of lead wire in there or lead free wire, I should say. Um, yeah, just heavy hooks, you know, you, you don't really need it because our fish aren't that big. I'm using it to just get this thing to, to drop so I can keep using my, uh, my floating poly leader. So that now my fly will end up, you know, maybe like that, so that I uh, I don't have to carry a bunch of stuff with me. I usually carry a little fly patch that's got a few skaters and a few uh, flies with some weight in them just to get them down a little deeper. Then I can be lazy. Um, this fly in particular, you know, I've got a nice little crest here. I'm just gonna pick a couple little doohickeys out, strip them down, clean them up. And I'm not particularly worried if it's really fuzzy or not, because I'm gonna show you a trick a friend showed me. It's not that traditional, but um, I know guys that are gonna see this and go, well, if you just keep working it, it'll stick together. See how it's kind of fraying out a little bit there? I don't really care, because I just take a little bit of hard head or whatever cement I got around, and I'm just gonna put just a little bit on there just to give it that little bit of shape and pull it together a little bit more. Now, this is where this fly for the summertime is not gonna work on the North Umqua or something like that because I'm adding, I'm adding weight to it. And you know, this is like, once I said again, this is purely so I can save the three minutes it's gonna take me to, uh, change tips and I can just be lazy. So I'm just gonna start this wire right there. And it's gonna be kind of a heavy fly. Get that nice and tied down. And I'm just gonna wrap nice and neatly. I'm tying this is with uh, 025. So like I said, pretty heavy. Um, you can tie it with lighter to get a little bit less weight out of it if you want, but my goal here is to just have this thing go down and, you know, get in that pocket. I actually do use this fly too when, uh, when uh, the winter time comes and I'm, you know, still using a Scandi line in the middle of winter, using a, like a 3D Scandi line and this fly and it gets down there pretty good, and, you know, in time, some of the times when I've used Skagit lines and didn't feel like I was at the bottom if I switched to a, you know, a multi-density Scandi line, which is a little thinner and a heavy fly like this, I, I hit the bottom and that makes me pretty happy in those times. Uh, this is a olive brown ice dub. You can use, you know, keep in mind, you can do whatever color scheme you want on this. I am just looking for those kind of fall colors, that olive, the orange, the yellow. Um, so right now we're gonna do two little things with the dubbing here. Oh, and I forgot to tell you, this uh, This is the Vivas uh, Gel Spun 50D. Been tying with that a lot, I like it. So I'm just gonna spin this on here 
and just like you would anything else no duh, no wax no just gonna get it on and around there keep keep it kind of tight right now in here just to get about halfway up that wire now I'm gonna form a dubbing loop run my thread up now I'm, not, I'm just going to do this dubbing loop with my fingers for what I'm doing. I'm not going to go get a dubbing spinner or anything like that. Um, I don't think I need it, but I am going to kind of prep this a little bit. You know, you don't need a lot for this, but I'm just going to kind of pull it out of, out. And just like you would do your other dubbing loops, you slide that up in there. I'm going to pinch, spin with my finger. Get it good and going, and then just pull, and then do it again. It's kind of the old school way of doing it. Um, now, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap. I'm gonna just wrap and fold, wrap and fold, and it's gonna make a nice furry body in there. I like that, because it's gonna make a lot of noise in the water for me. There we go. I could probably do a sharpening some scissors there. Next couple steps, you know, I've got a, this is a golden pheasant, um, but we have patches of this stuff in smaller, uh, smaller parts for you. So you can get this here at the shop in little packets, but I just happen to have this, so I'm pulling it off of here. I'm gonna pull one of these red ones right here. This is, you know, the, one of the nice things about this is that um, I'm not doing a lot of spinning when I do this fly. I'm, I'm cheating a bit. Um, but, you know, I'm taking these nice webby feathers and I'm just going to split this down the center, kind of like so. And I'm going to cut that one piece out of the middle so that it sits like that or like that. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to place that V just like you would have done. Um, on uh, like a Prince Nymph or something like that. I'm gonna place that just there and I'm gonna pinch and I'm gonna tie it in. I could have spun it and got it around, but I'm really looking for the red to be on the top. Let's cut that out of there. Get it nice and tied down. See how that just stands up nice and nice on the top. And somewhere around here I had some yellow ones, so I'm just going to pull some of that yellow out of there. And once again, we have this in the shop in, in packages um, for you, so you don't have to buy a whole, whole cape. Same thing, I'm going to look for that center. Just kind of work it a little bit so you can find out where it is. And you don't have to do that. Like, I won't even cut this one because this one is splitting out so well. So I'm just going to get it in half like that, so where I can see it. Then this one, I'm gonna push it in this way, so it's going down. Take all those little fibers, grab it, and make a couple of wraps. Cut it out of there, hold everything down, tie it down, just like that. So I got red on the top, gold on the bottom. And then, where'd it go? Oh, I'm hiding it over here. Back to the pheasant crest here. Let's find a nice, kind of long one right there. That works for me. So I'm just going to clean the bottom of this up a little bit because I'm going to do that, that kind of gluing trick in there again. So I'm just going to set that in there, pinch it down where I want it. Now see how that came out? I can just adjust it to where I want it. Pinch it down again, check it out. All right, that looks good to me. Cut it. Now if I wanted to, I could do that same trick, but this one's, you know, it's not, it's not looking bad. I'm liking it just like it is. So from there, you know, there's really not that much more to do here. Um, this is a barred mallard flank. I like the way it looks. Sometimes I use bronze mallard, things like that, but 
these come in different colors, so I'm uh, pretty happy with that. I'm looking for kind of the right size here for, for my webbing, and I, I think that's going to be about it for this one. Get rid of all my furry stuff just so it's out of my way. Separate them all so I can find where I'm going to tie in. Go a little higher up. Just like that. And, you know, that's kind of how I prep this to start. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie that in right there. Fold that back over so it won't pull out on me. And that'll hide pretty good. Take my scissors and fold these back a little bit. Same down here, just to make sure that everything's nice and folded. Then just fold and roll. And you can get, you know, as much of this on there as you want, or you don't have to get crazy. Kind of doing a lot because I really like this thing to stand out well. There you go. That's that's good right there. Come over the top. Come in front of it. Cut out my excess. That looks really good. I'm happy with that. So then I am going to pull that down a little bit and hold it. It's kind of got a little bit funky bit right there. So now you've seen me do this before with uh, other flies, and usually it's just when I have these laying around as, uh, you know, junk pieces. I'm going to make some cheeks here with this, uh, this guinea. And you could use any color again. That's a little big. See, it's going to end up right there. So that's just a little bit big. That looks about right for me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this back just so I can place it in the right place. You could use, uh, if you had jungle cock, you could do that. But I've been doing this to get away from the jungle cock because it's, it's bendy and kind of hard to come by sometimes. So give it a little bit of adjusting. Make up another one for the other side. measure it out there a little bit. I'm not too worried about this laying perfectly flat because there you go, that's about right. Oh, don't like that one at all. Let's get rid of that. That'll help me. What I did learn though too is if you can see that if you tie it in here on that on the barb this thing's going to kind of go wonky on it but if you tie it in just and catch a little bit in there then it'll it'll stay a little flatter for you pinch on there we go that looks good i like it Nice little head. Clean that up a little bit again. There we go. So, once again, Loon, you know, the U, UV clear finish. Just get it on there. Roll it around. Get it to where you want it. Hit it with the light. You could use hard and clear. You could use any of the those the cements that you want um, for this. I just use this because it's so fast, and then I get to go fishing. Um, one thing I, I mean, I don't know if you can hear this from there, but you know, there's there's some weight to that fly. You can, it's not just gonna sit sit up there. It's gonna drop for you, but it'll make it so that you don't have to do a whole bunch of stuff out there. You just have to switch a fly to get a little deeper. Sometimes I've hidden a, uh, you know, you can hide a little bead in there too if you need a little bit of extra weight. 
Uh, but this usually gets the job done. So it's, like I said, it's a good little, uh, you know, late summer, early fall, when you, you know, middle of the day, when you gotta be down a little bit and you're, you know, when the sun's out, this'll get it, get it done for you. All right, have fun, go fishing. <laughs>